How to catch AI in a lie. Just ask multiple questions. What is the description of the Jews of Portuguese in the 1400s? During the 15th century, the Jewish community in Portugal was significant and thriving. They were involved in many aspects of Portuguese society, including commerce, finance, and the arts. Portuguese Jews were known for their education, wealth, and social prestige, and they maintained a distinct identity while assimilating into broader Portuguese culture. However, in 1496, King Manuel I of Portugal declared that all Jews had to either convert to Christianity or leave the country, leading to a significant exodus of Portuguese Jews. Question, what color were they? It is not accurate to describe the color of the skin of Jews in Portugal in the 1400s as the community was diverse and consisted of individuals with different ethnic backgrounds and physical characteristics. This is how you catch AI in a lie, right? Because they'll say something, but whenever it comes to black people, it's all vague and ambiguous and all of this, right? Watch as we read down and you're going to see how AI lied. The Jewish community in Portugal, including Sephardic Jews who had their origins in Spain and North Africa, as well as some Ashkenazi Jews who had migrated from Eastern Europe, like any other ethnic or religious group, Jews in Portugal likely had a wide range of physical features and skin colors, including fair, olive, and dark skin tones. So fair is not a complexion. Olive comes in green, brown, or black. And dark skin tones meaning brown black people. You see that? So initially it said, oh, it's, it's ambiguous. We don't know. But now it's telling you olive, that's black or brown or dark skin or black. Watch this. Did Portuguese Jews look African in the 1400s? Answer. It is not accurate to say that Portuguese Jews looked African in 1400s while there were Sephardic Jews from North Africa who had migrated to Portugal as well as some converts to Judaism from African populations. The Jewish community in Portugal was not primarily made up of individuals with African ancestry. The Jewish community in Portugal consisted of individuals from various backgrounds, including Sephardic Jews with Spanish and Portuguese ancestry, as well as Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe. Furthermore, it is important to note that attempting to categorize or generalize physical characteristics of a whole population based on their religious or ethnic background is problematic and oversimplified. Just like any other religious or ethnic group, Jews in Portugal likely had a wide range of physical features and skin colors, and it would be inaccurate to make assumptions about their appearance based solely on their Jewish identity. This is how I caught it in a lie, because it said the Jews and Jews were exiled, right, out of Portugal, right? We're going to find out more as we read on. According to the book, Jews and Moors, and this was my response. According to the book, Jews and Moors in Spain, what color was the Portuguese Jews that was exiled and put into slavery? Then it says, I'm sorry, but it is not accurate to claim that all Portuguese Jews who were exiled and enslaved had a particular skin color. Portuguese Jews, like any other ethnic or religious group, had a diverse range of physical features that were not determined solely by their Jewish identity. It is important to avoid es essentially or stereotyping groups of people based on their ethnic or religious background. Were Portuguese Jews kicked out of Spain and sent to Africa? Did they go into slavery? What color are they? Portuguese Jews were not kicked out of Spain. It was the Spanish Jews who were expelled from Spain in 1492. Now that information is correct. They were kicked out of Spain and then they fled into Portugal, which is the Iberian Peninsula, which is the same shit. But you see how uh, this uh, AI bot is trying to use technicalities to deceive, right? It says Portuguese Jews face their own challenges, including persecution and forced conversion, but they were not exiled as a group to Africa. Regarding slavery, it is possible that some Jews became slaves. So now...
So now, hold on. So now it's saying, oh, some Jews became slaves. So now it's saying some point. You see how this AI was manufactured to bullshit you? First it said, nah, they ain't going to slavery. Now it says, oh, some Portuguese Jews became slaves. You see that? As slavery was practiced in Portugal and its colonies during that period. However, it is not accurate to say that all Portuguese Jews were enslaved. I asked a simple question. Yes or no was all I needed. But guess what? The AI is designed to give half truths. Let's keep reading. We'll see how the AI got caught in a lie. Additionally, like any other ethnic or religious group, Portuguese Jews had diverse range of physical features and skin colors. You see, it's given the same crap. It is not accurate or appropriate to make assumptions about the physical characteristics of a group of people based solely of their ethnic or religious identity. It is important to avoid essentially or stereotyping groups of people based on their background. What color are Danish people? The people of Denmark have a diverse range of physical features and skin colors ranging from fair to olive. You see, it, it doesn't give a straight answer. It doesn't give a straight answer. As with any other country, skin color and physical features can vary significantly based on a number of factors, including ancestry, cultural heritage, and geography. However, it is important to note that attempting to categorize or generalize physical characteristics of an entire population based on nationality is problematic and oversimplified. Then I ask the question, who was exiled from Spain and Portugal in the 1400s? In the 1400s, this is the response, both Spain and Portugal expelled the Jewish population. So now, so now, after I asked a straightforward question, now it wants to start answering, right? After I asked it before, who was exiled, who was kicked out of Spain and Portugal, it, it wanted to separate color from Jews. So now... I'm catching it in a lie because now it's answering it once I made the, the question vague. In the 1400s, both Spain and Portugal expanded their Jewish population. Spain issued the Alhambra Decree in 1492, which ordered the expulsion of all Jews who refused to convert to Christianity. This resulted in expulsion of around 200,000 Jews from Spain. It was more than that. The majority of whom settled in North Africa, North Africa, the Ottoman Empire and other parts of Europe. You see, so I asked it. I asked it earlier if Jews went into Africa. I didn't want to answer that. Now we're saying Jews went into Africa. Jews went into Africa. Watch this. Portugal, on the other hand, did not expel all its Jews in the 1400s, but rather faced a period of forced conversions and persecutions, a.k.a. the Inquisition, a.k.a. mass conversions to Catholicism. In 1497, King Manuel I of Portugal issued an edict ordering the forced conversion of all Jews in Portugal to Christianity. The edict also required Jewish children to be taken from their parents and baptized. This is kidnapping. This is kidnapping. So they were stealing children from their parents. This is what the government was doing. We should never forget what they did to our ancestors. This is the same thing that you read about in the 1600s. They were doing it from the 1400s and onward. The edict also required Jewish children to be taken from their parents and baptized. Many Portuguese Jews converted under duress, but others chose to flee the country. After the con conversion, so-called new Christians, a.k.a. Israelites, a.k.a. Jews, faced persecution and discrimination. Faced persecution and discrimination. What group of people you know today still suffer from persecution and discrimination? Hmm. By the Inquisition later in the 1500s, meaning they were torturing them. Many of these new Christians, or a.k.a. Portuguese Jews, many of the new Christians fled Portugal 
for other countries, including Brazil and the Netherlands. Question, where did these Portuguese and Spanish Jews flee to? Following the expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492 and the forced conversions in Portugal in 1497, many Iberian Jews fled the region to escape persecution and threats to their lives and religious freedoms. Many Spanish Jews settled in other countries within the Ottoman Empire, North Africa, North Africa, Italy, and the Balkans. Some Spanish Jews also chose to migrate to Spanish colonies in the Americas, the Caribbean, and the Philippines. Portuguese Jews similarly settled in many countries across the world. Some Portuguese Jews chose to relocate to other parts of Europe, such as Netherlands, France, and Italy. Others settled in the Ottoman Empire, that's, that's North Africa, and the Middle East. Many Portuguese Jews also migrated to Brazil, which had been colonized by the Portuguese in the early 1500s. Overall, the expulsions and forced conversions of Iberian Jews in the late 15th century led to dispersal of Jews across the world, led to the dispersal of Jews across the world and contributed to the emergence of a global Jewish diaspora. Did these exiles ever get enslaved? It is possible. Listen to the answer. It is possible. <coughs> It is possible that some Jewish individuals who were exiled from Spain and Portugal followed the expulsion of the late 15th century may have been enslaved at some point in their lives. However, it is important to note that slavery was not specifically directed towards Jews. This is how I caught it in a lie, but rather towards people who were captured or enslaved as a result of war, trade, or various other circumstances. During the period of the Atlantic slave trade, which took place from the 16th to the 19th century, many Africans were enslaved and brought to the Americas, including Brazil, where a significant population of Jewish refugees from Portugal settled. However, it is not accurate to say that all Jewish individuals who were exiled or forced to flee from their homes were subsequently enslaved as their experiences varied widely and were influenced by many factors, including the historical and social context in which they were. My response, the Israelites are black slaves that was kicked out of Spain. This is what I deduced out of all the rhetoric that it was given. This, this is what I deduced. Then it says, it is important to acknowledge and understand the historical experience of all people around throughout the world, including the Israelites and the African diaspora. You see that? So in one sentence it says Jewish diaspora. In the next sentence it says African diaspora. Israelites and the African diaspora. This is how you catch these jokers in a lie. Because they'll have their technology print out some BS to try to deceive. And you have to be able to read between the lines. In one sentence it says Jewish diaspora. The next sentence says Israelites and African diaspora. Here's a lie. However, it is not accurate to generalize all Israelites as black slaves that were kicked out of Spain. The history and origins of the Israelites are complex and varied and their experiences throughout history cannot be simplified in such a manner. Additionally, it is important to be respectful and tactful when discussing sensitive historical topics. What's, sens what's sensitive about it? What's sensitive? Are the Israelites from Igbo, Yoruba, Dahomey, and Congo? There is a theory popularized by some individuals and groups that some African ethnic groups such as the Igbo, Yoruba, Dahomey, and Congo are descendants of the Israelites or have Israelite ancestry. However, these claims are not supported by mainstream scholarship, meaning the liars, and lack evidence. Okay. While there may be some cultural or linguistic similarities between certain African 
ethnic groups and Israelites, it is important to approach such claims with caution and respect for the diverse histories and identities of all communities. So instead of saying, hey, look, let me give you some accurate information, they want to try to make it vague. Let's continue on. I asked the question, what groups popularize this theory you're mentioning? The theory that some African ethnic groups have Israelite ancestry has popular has been popularized by a number of groups and individuals, including some religious and cultural organizations, activist groups, and scholars. So that's telling you it's not just a theory. You got entire religious groups, cultural organizations, you got activist groups, and scholars substantiating this. Some of these groups and individuals believe in the idea of a, quote, lost tribe of Israelites that migrated to Africa, that migrated to Africa and assimilated into various African cultures, while others see the connection between Israelites and Africans as more symbolic or metaphorical. The debate on this theory and its evidence is ongoing, and scholarly research has not been able to conclusively prove or disprove these claims. My question, what has Harvard University, I spelled Harvard incorrectly, what has Harvard University Press written about the relationship between blacks being the original Israelites? List these books. Here go to bullshit. To the best of my knowledge, Harvard University Press has not published any any academic work specifically exploring the hypothesis that black people are are the original Israelites. That's a lie, because I have a book right now from Harvard University Press. Harvard University Press is a respected academic publisher that produces works on a wide range of subjects, but it generally relies on rigorous empirical research and scholarship to authenticate the arguments made in the academic works it publishes. Many theories and claims have been made about the origins of Israelites over the years by various groups, but they have not been widely accepted by scholars. Lie. In the field of biblical and historical studies. Lie. I would suggest, cons- I would suggest, now he's giving me suggestions. I would suggest consulting academic journals and books from reputable publishers in the field of Bible and ancient Near East studies to gain a more comprehensive and understanding of different interpretations of the origins and history of the Israelite people. So now I find it interesting that they have interest info on the Romans and the Greeks, and we know who they are, the descendants of Europeans. But when it comes to the Israelites, oh, it's vague. We don't know. We can't figure it out. Uh, uh, there's no reputable sources. Bullshit. Watch this. Oh, thank you. This is my sarcasm. Thank you for the recommendation. I understand that you are limited in knowledge. However, you have an internet connection, which should enable you to search the internet to answer my question. List the books that talk about the relationship between blacks and ancient Israelites. So now I'm asking it a direct question. You see this? List the books. Watch this. There are various books that explore the relationship between black people and ancient Israelites. However, it is important to note that many of these books espouse theories and ideas that are not widely accepted by mainstream scholars or may be based on historical inaccuracies. Here are a a few examples of books that explore this topic. So you're going to get a list of books. This is going to increase your study. Make sure you get these books. Number one, The Hebrew Heritage of Black Africa by Stephen Jacobs. Number two, the, the uh, From Babylon to Timbuktu, A History of Ancient Black Races, Including the Black Hebrews by Rudolf Windsor. Number three, African Presence in Early Asia by Renoko Rashidi. Number four, The Black Presence in the Bible, Discovering the Black and African Identity of Biblical Persons and Nations by Walter A. McRae. Number five, Black Holes in the Bible, The Black Presence in the Bible by Velma Love. Number six, Israelite Heredity, Gentile Adoption by Elisha Israel. Number seven, (laughs) 
The Seed of Abraham, Jews and Arabs in Contact and Conflict by Gary A. Tobin and Dennis R. A. V. Yona. It is important to evaluate the claims made in these books and other similar books critically and weigh them against existing evidence and scholarly consensus. My response, I don't care about your opinion. Only answer my question. Answer, I, re- I apologize if my previous response did not meet your expectations. As an AI language model, I do not have opinions, but I can do my best to answer your questions. So, this is how I caught it in a lie again. If it didn't have an opinion, why did it provide me with suggestions and recommendations based on the fact? Let's let's go back up again. Let's go back up again. It says, I would suggest, that's an opinion, consulting academic journals and publishers and reputable publishers and books. So then when I said list the books, it gave me an opinion, and then it gave me the list, and then it gave me an opinion after that. This is how you catch AI in a lie. Then I said, I don't want your opinion. Just answer my question. Then it says, here are a few more books that explore the relationship between black people and ancient Israelites. Number one, we the black Jews witness to the white Jewish race myth, volumes one and two by Yosef A.A. Ben Jokanan. Number two, the African origin of the Jews. White Jews can't prove they are Jews by Leonard Jeffries. Number three, the black Jews of Africa. History, Religion, Identity by Edith Broder. Number four, the African presence in the Bible, gospel sermons rooted in history. Majesty and Authenticity by John L. Johnson, Jr. Number five, they came before Columbus, the African presence in ancient America by Ivan Van Sertima. Now they give, it gives me its opinion again. Again. It is important to exercise caution and evaluate the sources critically, weighing them against existing evidence and scholarly consensus. So you never gave me an answer of who the black Jews were when they were in Portugal, but now, or Spain, but now I'm asking specific questions. Give me a list of books. Now you got answers, right? Then I said, give me more books. Here are some more books that may explore the relationship between black people and ancient Israelites. So remember, earlier this thing said there was no scholarly works whatsoever, right? Now it's giving me list after list after list of a whole bunch of books on the subject. Number one, Hebrewisms of West Africa by Joseph J. Williams. Number two, Black Biblical Studies, an anthology on Charles B. Coffer by Charles B. Coffer. Number three, from Exile to Eden, a family journal by Manasseh ben Israel. Number four, The Jews of Africa by Sidney Mendelssohn. Number five, Black Jewish Relations in African American and Jewish American Fiction. An annotated bibliography by Louis D. Silverstein. Number six, God's Black Prophets. <coughs> Excuse me. Deconstructing White Theology by Marvin A. McMickle. Number seven, The Jews of Ethiopia, The Birth of an Elite by Tudor Parfit. Again, it is important. So now it gives me a list of books, but then gives me a stupid opinion that I didn't ask for after I said, don't give me a fucking opinion. Excuse my French. Again, It is important to note that many of these books espouse theories and ideas that are not widely accepted by mainstream scholars or maybe based on historical inaccuracies. It is important to weigh them against existing evidence and scholarly consensus to develop a comprehensive understanding of the topic. Let me tell the listener why I don't agree with this statement that AI is making. 
History is always full of people that want to indoctrinate us with white delusionalism. Whenever it comes to black history, they always want to make it vague. We're going to read on and see more information. Let's read on. List more books. Here are some additional books that may explore the relationship between black people and ancient Israelites. Number one. The Lost Tribes of Israel, The History of a Myth by Tudor Parfit. Number two, The Black Hebrews and the Black Christ by W.A.R. Goodwin. Number three, Judah's Scepter and Joseph's Birthright by J.H. Allen. Number four, Hebrewisms of West Africa from Nile to Niger with the Jews by Joseph J. Williams. Number five, The Ten Lost Tribes, A World History by Zivi Ben-Dor Bennett. Number six, Sons of Africa, The Black Hebrews of North America by Wakil Allah. Number seven, Black Biblical Studies, an anthology, Charles B. Kofer. Remember, it is important to exercise caution and evaluate the sources critically to develop an understanding of an accurate understanding of the topic. Explain the Moor Jews of Spain. The Moors were a Muslim people who conquered parts of the Iberian Peninsula, including what is now Spain, in the 8th century. During this time, Jews were living in Spain, some of whom served in prominent roles in the Muslim court. These Jews were known as Sephardim after the Hebrew word for Spain, Sephardim. Over time, many Sephardic Jews assimilated into the local culture and adopted elements of Arabic culture and language. However, they maintained their Jewish identity and language Ladino or a Judeo-Spanish dialect and traditions. In 1492, the Catholic monarchs Ferdinand and Isabella expelled the Jews from Spain as part of the Spanish Inquisition. Many Sephardic Jews fled to other countries, including some who settled in Morocco and other parts of North Africa, as well as the Ottoman Empire in the in the Mid East or Northeast Africa. The term Moorish Jews is sometimes used to refer to Sephardic Jews who were influenced by Moorish culture. More means black y'all. Moorish culture and lived in Spain and North Africa. Some descendants of these Jews still live in Morocco, more means black, and there has been a renewed interest in Sephardic heritage in recent years. Question. Explain the slaves that were taken from Spain and brought to America under Ferdinand and Isabella. During the 15th century, the Spanish monarchs, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to overcome a cold. During the 15th century, the Spanish monarchs, Ferdinand and Isabella, 